I'm Dr. Amy Cranbeck, Professor of Urology at Northwestern Medicine. I am also the Division Chief of Endourology, and I specialize in surgical removal of stones as well as BPH. HOLEP, or Holium Laser Enucleation of the Prostate, is a state-of-the-art technology used to treat BPH for prostate enlargement. The procedure is performed with the patient asleep in the operating room. In certain circumstances, it can be done under a spinal anesthetic, but generally it's performed under general anesthetic. A cystoscope is placed in the patient's urethra and using a specialized laser, the inside of the prostate is cored out, leaving only a thin rim of prostate behind. Another device called a morselator is used to chew up the tissue and remove it from the body. So at the end of the procedure, all that is left is a thin rim of prostate tissue called the capsule and very little bleeding. Oftentimes, the patients can go home the same day without a catheter and downtime is approximately one to two weeks until all hematuria or bleeding stops. So before a HOLUP procedure, you will be interviewed by a physician, usually myself or someone from my team. We will do a complete workup to ensure that the symptoms you are having are secondary to your BPH and not another condition. We will do a prostate cancer screening. We may ask you to empty your bladder and do a post-void residual. We may ask to do a cystoscopic exam where we look inside your bladder uh, inside the prostate, and we may ask you to do a specialized flow exam where you uh, urinate into a special toilet that measures how quickly your urine flows from your body. We will also ask you to complete several questionnaires that will quantify the severity of your symptoms. As far as the prostate cancer screening, it will start with a PSA exam and possibly a rectal exam to palpate or feel your prostate. If necessary, an MRI of the prostate will be ordered and possibly a CT scan of the prostate as well. During your HOLUP procedure, you can expect to spend at least a half a day at the hospital, possibly overnight. Uh, the procedure, as said before, is done under a general anesthetic Afterwards, you will wake up with a catheter in your bladder, which will remain in place for at least one to two hours. After you are fully awake from the anesthetic, and we will ask you to walk around. And if the color of the urine is not too red, so you do not have too much hematuria, then we will remove the catheter. Once the catheter is removed, you will be asked to urinate at least twice before going home. After the HOLUP procedure, you will be expected to not do any strenuous activity for one week. During that one week time, we want you to drink significant amounts of fluids so that your urine will stay clear and dilute until all the blood in the urine resolves. That's usually around one week's time. At the end of a week, you can start easing back into your normal activities and exercising. But for the first week, we want you to do no forms of exercise and just really rest and let your body recover. The whole of surgery can vary in time based on the size of your prostate. So symptoms from your prostate are not dependent on the size of the prostate. So very small prostates can cause severe symptoms and very large prostates may not cause that severe of symptoms but the size of the prostate can dictate how long the whole procedure takes. So for a prostate that's 100 grams or less, it's usually around 30 to 45 minutes. Between 100 to 200 grams is around an hour and a half to two hours, and over 200 grams is around two and a half to three hours of surgery time. So the recovery time for the HOLUP procedure can vary vastly. 
some patients only need two or three days of recovery before they go back to their normal selves and urinating excellently. Other patients require a longer time. Uh, they may feel like they have burning with urination or what we would call dysuria. That can last for one to two days or it can last for several weeks. Blood in the urine or hematuria can also last for two to three days or for several weeks if you're taking blood thinners or other anticoagulants. Stress urinary incontinence is rare, but urge urinary incontinence, where you feel like you need to go to the bathroom but can't quite make it to the bathroom, occurs in about 30% of men. It's generally related to significant inflammation and it goes away as your body heals. That can take several weeks after surgery to go away if you are in that 30% of men who experience it right after surgery. Most patients are back to light exercise at the end of one week, and they're back to full exercise at the end of two weeks. However, I want you to avoid very heavy weightlifting or bicycle riding for one month after surgery. I tell all my patients to request at least one week off after surgery. Now, some people with desk jobs will choose to work from home or do light desk work at 48 hours after surgery, but if you can take a week off, I think that's ideal. If you have a very strenuous or active job, I would ask you to take two weeks off before returning to work.